In the RV world, a towed vehicle is affectionately called a towed. Simply put, not all vehicles can be towed behind a motorhome. In this video, I'm going to give you what I've learned as to how to select the proper vehicle for towing. There are three types of uh, towing that you can do behind a motorhome. Dinghy towing, dolly towing, and trailer towing. Dinghy towing, also known as four down or flat towing, is when all four wheels are on the ground. Dolly tow is when the front two wheels are on a dolly and the rear two wheels are on the ground or vice versa in some cases. And trailer tow is when the whole vehicle is on a trailer. Well, since you can virtually trailer any car uh, on a, a trailer tow, we're not really going to cover that. Dinghy towing is by far the most popular because it is simple to connect and disconnect a vehicle especially if you have to disconnect a vehicle when you're uh, like at a gas station and your rig is just too big to fit. Also, you don't have to worry about storing a trailer or a dolly. However, it does require vehicle modification by the added on a base plate. And uh, running the vehicle around this way can add wear and tear to the vehicle while you're towing it. The big problem though is not all vehicles can be dinghy towed, especially uh, automatic transmissions. There are a few vehicles, however, with automatic transmissions that can be towed, but you have to really look for the ones that can. Dolly towed is the second uh, way to tow, and this is by using a two-wheel dolly that you drive the front of the wheels of the vehicle onto. Virtually all front-wheel drive vehicles, especially automatics, can be towed. However, rear-wheel drive and four-wheel drive vehicles usually cannot be towed. The advantages here is there's no vehicle modification and you can tow virtually any front wheel drive vehicle. Uh, the problem though is it is rather cumbersome and it can be very difficult to unhook and hook uh, the uh, vehicle up, especially you know if you got to go to the gas station and the vehicle won't fit along with the RV and you got to disconnect it in the parking lot and stuff. It can be kind of a hassle. So this kind of has fallen out of favor with uh, many uh, RVers. So the question then becomes, do you dinghy tow or do you dolly tow? Well, obviously the answer to that depends on what car you have uh, or what car you plan on buying. Now, generally speaking, for automatic transmission cars, a few of those can be uh, dinghy towed, but most can be dolly towed. Uh, for four-wheel drive cars, whether they're automatic or standard, they can generally only be uh, dinghy towed but not dolly towed or not dinghy towed at all depending on their capability and then some cars the manufacturers uh, will allow you to tow a manual transmission uh, but not automatic but again some manufacturers allow you to tow an automatic transmission car especially an example like a CRV which it's only available in an automatic and it's probably the second most popular towed uh, out there Recently, I conducted some research on what the most popular towed vehicle was. This research consisted basically of counting cars on a trip from Michigan to Florida, which was some 3,000 miles round trip. In that uh, research, we did find that the number one towed vehicle is a Jeep Wrangler. Uh, they just seem to be the best match for most people to tow and you certainly can't go wrong with a Jeep Wrangler because just about every model Wrangler uh, that's out there can be towed. Number two on the popularity list coming in just behind the Jeep Wrangler is a CRV made by Honda. Now there are two types of uh, CRVs. There's a four-wheel drive and a two-wheel drive. Both of them are automatics. So this is one car that the automatic can be flat towed. Now the two-wheel or the four-wheel drive can be flat towed. However, only the two-wheel drive can be uh, dolly towed because you can't have two wheels turning in a four-wheel drive and two wheels not turning. So, again, this is uh, one of the very popular cars uh, for towing, and you see a whole lot of them out on the road. And the number three car that we found uh, most popular for towing is a Jeep Liberty. Unfortunately, 2012 was the last year manufacturer for this vehicle, so you'll have to buy one used uh, if you want one. Now, this one, uh, the, the manual and automatic version can be both towed uh, as long as it is a four-wheel drive. Well, probably the best place to start uh, your search for a tow vehicle 
is uh, this motorhome magazine supplement that they come out with every year called a Guide to Dignity Towing. And basically it has um, in here uh, a guide to all the vehicles that it has found that is suitable for four-wheel or dinghy towing. I would use this guide as a start to help narrow the selection down. But when you're done, don't go by this guide alone. Get the manual for the car you want to tow. You can download most manuals uh, as a PDF online. And then most manuals have a section called Recreational Vehicle Towing, such as this one does. And this manual clearly states that um, the vehicle may be towed in a four-down situation. Uh, they're calling it dinghy towing. In fact, it even shows you a procedure which includes uh, turning off the ignition switch, setting the parking brake, uh, removing the wiper PCM and ACC fuses, and then turning the, ign the ignition to accessory and shifting the transaxle to neutral and removing the parking brake. So there's a definite procedure in here for dinghy towing. Other vehicles have different procedures. Um, the CRV, for instance, seems to be more of a voodoo type uh, arrangement. And these are also covered in this book to some extent. Uh, however, I would use this again as a guide to get you close and then verify it with your owner's manual. I've also found that if you talk to a dealer, a car dealer, unless they're really into RVs, and even the customer service from the manufacturer, you may not even get the right information because uh, quite often uh, they just don't know. Now some manufacturers, uh, such as Ford, uh, they also uh, have a pamphlet that they uh, produce calling the Towing Guide which not only um, gives you information on towing a trailer, but also as a towed vehicle. So that's a good place to find out if your car, if you have a Ford car anyway, whether it could be towed or not. Now, it's interesting to note with Ford, you know, some transmissions are towable, some are not. Also, you'll want to download the guide for your particular year because I have also seen where some vehicles are towable in certain years and they're not in other years. Use the internet to download this dinghy roundup if you don't have a, a subscription to the magazine. And you can get previous years, so make sure you get the year for the vehicle you're looking at. Because again, one year may not work uh, and another year may. And then verify that information as a follow-up minimum by looking at the uh, owner's manual. And again, most owner's manuals do have a recreational towing uh, section. Here is an example of different uh, models that can be towed and not towed uh, from a particular manufacturer. Of course, this is Ford, and we're talking about automatic transmissions here. This is a 2014 Ford Taurus with a 3.6 liter V6 and a 6F55 transmission. It's an automatic and it can be four wheel towed. Uh, Ford calls it neutral towing. However, this same car with a 2.0 liter EcoBoost engine having a 6F35 transmission cannot be towed. Now, it's interesting that across the Ford brand, anything with a 6F55 transmission generally can be towed Anything with a 6F35 transmission cannot be towed unless you get an aftermarket uh, oil pump for the uh, transmission and then that probably is going to void your warranty if you have a new car. This 2014 Cherokee is an interesting example. Uh, this vehicle replaced the uh, Liberty. Uh, there's three transmissions available, a uh, front wheel drive, a four wheel drive, and a four wheel drive with dual speed transfer case. It's interesting that only the uh, four-wheel drive with the dual-speed transfer case is dinghy towable. The front-wheel drive is dolly towable. And the four-wheel drive that's a standard uh, uh, transmission is not towable at all. So depending on the vehicle, uh, you're going to be able to dinghy tow, dolly tow, or not tow this thing at all. And given that the uh, two-speed uh, transaxle is a $1,000 option, uh, you may not find Cherokees with this uh, option very easily. However, the Trailhawk has it as standard equipment. And in the case of Nissan, 
Another of vehicles that have automatic transmissions can be uh, dinghy towed. The reason is they have CVT, continuously variable transmissions, and consequently none of those can be towed four down. They can, however, be towed with a dolly. The only cars that Nissan has that can be dinghy towed are ones that have manual transmissions. Well, we finally decided on a tow car, or towed as they affectionately call it. This is a 2002 Pontiac Grand Am. It's in great shape. Um, and I looked underneath the front grille and stuff. It's going to be easy to put a base plate in. Our other alternative uh, was our brand new Taurus. I just couldn't see drilling holes in it. This car is 12 years old, so even though it's still in nice shape, um, you know, I don't want to bungle the job. But I'm not as uh, opposed to drilling holes in you know, where it needs to be drilled. When selecting your vehicle and your towing setup, uh, you need to determine whether you're going to do dinghy or dolly towing, the weight limits of your RV, and the vehicle capability. Now, of course, the vehicle capability is whether it can be flat towed or it has to be dolly towed, so that's going to be a big consideration for determining whether you're doing dinghy or dolly. Now, the weight limits of your RV Typically, most RVs that are Class C gas are either 3,500 or 5,000 pound uh, tow limit. Uh, Class A vehicles that are gas are also usually around 3,500 to 5,000 pounds. Class C diesels, of which there are a few, and the Class A diesels typically have a 10,000 pound towing limit. So you're not going to usually have any issues with those vehicles. Now, a dolly weighs anywhere between 5 and 700 pounds. And you usually have to reduce your uh, gross vehicle uh, weight rating uh, by the tongue hitch weight, which can be 10% of uh, the weight on the dolly. So you're going to have some issues there that you're going to have to work through to find out uh, what's best for you. Now also, uh, dolly normally comes with brakes, and most states require brakes on any vehicle or trailer that you tow that is more than 1,500 pounds. So when you're doing uh, dinghy towing, you normally have to put a supplemental braking system on it, whether it's a portable system or a hardwired system. And uh, that also includes, you know, adding more stuff to the vehicle, uh, potentially. So there are some uh, advantages of dolly towing again versus dinghy towing, which we've discussed. So just in summary, uh, you know, come up with a little uh, spreadsheet or pencil and paper or whatever you want to do and just jot down what you need to consider.